What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your June 28th reading for uh, your daily creative reading. We're going to dive right in here. Uh, the jersey is my beloved Colorado Avalanche. They won the Stanley Cup. And, you know, people say that spiritual stuff doesn't juncture with that, but this is me showing up authentically. And, oh man, I love hockey. That was a great series. So um, I refuse to take this off today. <laughs> but nonetheless, we are going to dive right in. Okay, let's do this. <sighs> I would like to invite the angels, my guardian angels, my spirit guides, protectors, teachers, and their healing energy to this space. And I ask that it is a safe and brave space that allows for the fullest expression of our light, humanity, ascension, and healing. Okay, so <clears throat> we are going to dive in here and see. Um, we'll first, yeah, we'll pull from we'll pull from the postcards from Spirit deck. Okay. Postcards from Spirit. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for June 28th, please? Okay, so on the back here we have you are not alone. That's beautiful. You are not alone. Dear, dear you, it might be hard to believe you'll ever get to where you want to go, feel the way you want to feel, and find peace and security, but you can. There's lots to celebrate in this life, but first you need to let go of this attachment to achieving certain results. It's easy to get caught in the endless loop of wanting this or that so you can feel safe. The only way out is to surrender the attachment. Empty yourself so you can be filled with something new. The compulsion will be lifted and peace will come. Trust that something better waits, that something new will open up and you will see new opportunities for fulfillment. The truth is, whenever you get into the loop, what you're really looking for is spirit. That connection is where the power, the peace, and the purpose lies. Everything else follows after that. Give yourself a hug. We've got you. Loving you so, so much. I like that energy a lot. I'm just going to close my window because I don't know if my neighbor is going to start mowing their lawn. And I feel like it wouldn't be the best ambiance. <laughs> um. All right. Let us away. Let us away. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives, please? I keep seeing fireflies. This came up in yesterday's reading, too, where I was at my aunt's house um, it, one evening over the weekend, and um, we were just sitting in the backyard, and as evening descended, there were these fireflies that just... It was beautiful. They popped up and it was just a couple of them at first. And I forgotten, I had forgotten what it, what it felt like to just behold them. Like sometimes you see it in the evenings when I'm driving home at night after work, I'll see them on the side of the road and, um, they just start to flicker, but I never get the chance to just sit and meditate with them or on them. And, um, it was just lovely because you could see them start to come out all along the grass. And then as, as evening fell, they were up in the trees as well. Um, it was just lovely. So Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives, please, for June 28th? Fireflies. Yeah. We have the Five of Cups, the Six of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, the Magician in reverse. Interesting. Okay. Um, the Four of Wands. There's the train coming in. <laughs> Uh, four of wands and then we have the bridging consciousness energy as the antagonist very very interesting okay and we have the queen of cups the eight of wands the star and the three of pentacles okay let me roll up my sleeves here this baggy jersey but i love it um I feel like, so what I immediately got and the reason why this came out as, so we have the five of cups, the six of pentacles, um, and then we have the nine of wands. Now, what I'm realizing here, and the reason why I put the magician in reverse was the immediate energy that I got from this was the magician was in reverse because it's almost like there was, it's like there was, <sighs> there's energies that are messing with manifestation right now. And I feel like one of them is like past disappointments, um, intermittent balance, but this is also it's four 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 was just on the time but it's also like an imbalance as well so it's like nine of wands um was like the hard work like the end of the cycle some frustration you're just like Gah! like you're you know like this is you showing up like enough is enough 
like it's the pre if this like I, I see the nine of wands as like pre emperor energy where the nine of pentacles is like pre empress energy right so this is you specific to this deck too it's like you're showing up in this energy of like Gah, enough is enough but I feel like that doesn't do that's not how manifesting works that's not how the law of attraction works and not just the law of attraction like broadly speaking but it just it's like you can throw so much work into something but it's not until you start to make inspired progress and take steps that are inspiring to you that progress is made I'm not talking about like the boring stuff that you need to do to get from point a to point b I'm talking about the stuff that is like not overly sexy to do and it's just like it's it's the stuff that over time it will drain your energy because it's it's like this is the energy that dominates right this frustrated disappointment because things aren't moving but there's just a need to come into balance so that you can see yourself and the actions that you're taking or not taking or that you need to be taking so there's this kind of there's a, a way that this energy needs to come back into balance um and the four of wands is showing up in the protagonist position but in reverse um the way that i'm reading this right now is that there's i think that there hasn't been much working with others and that maybe there's a need to uh, especially uh, specifically with the three of pentacles showing up here at the end um but i feel like there's a way that you are maybe blocking this or not blocking how do i word this it's like you were there was a struggle here i'm almost getting like a, a kind of like uh locking heads locking horns um but it's like because there's a stability shake up here like this is to me instability like it, I get that that's something that you're wanting um specifically with the queen of cups and this bridging energy here there's like a stability that you're like reaching for this week or through things you take on this week but then there's also this aspect of that energy being really out of balance with um with the efforts like there's it's almost like there's an over effort and an under emotion or under like there's a way that there's like um you're not connecting to your emotions like you could um and when I say that I just mean that there's a way that your emotions are missing from the equation like you haven't been prioritizing them because the queen of cups is in the challenge position for the day so this is like the, the thing you have to overcome um the thing you have to overcome is um is is it's it's not like an emotional battle but it's just a recognition so at the top of the card there's someone in looking down and i i feel like this is about you um seeing the depths of your the rich inner world that you have and that's probably been a challenge if you've been navigating all of these really it's like i'm also getting like hot and cold energies right like hot and cold and this it's almost it it's like a reversal energy that I'm picking up on because it's like you haven't been in balance and you really just need to see yourself. You need to see yourself clearly, specifically with this mirroring energy here. And it's like there's like hot and cold, like there's no in between. It's just either or it's it's really, to me, it's quite striking, um, the difference here. And it's almost like it, it, there's, um, it's like uh, polarized energies that are in this binary thing that's like, um, either or thinking like it's it's like there's a, a a rich in between and it's like you need to find the in between but it's also very much connected to your to your heart you know like this it's like I don't know yeah it's like this it, it's a connection to your heart um and what does that mean? Uh, okay, so because <laughs> I don't like making general statements like that without adding without adding something that allows you to take value from this and to apply it in your own life. So what I'm getting from here is this. Um, I'm getting that there's like a need to bridge where you are with where you want to be and integrating that energy, not in a way that keeps something outside of you, but that imagines it as though it's already here. So for example, uh, a lot of folks tend to go more towards relationship because they want to manifest relationship. So um, what you could do, you could imagine what, you know, the acting as if part, like what would conversations with your person feel like in the morning? right or or a time that feels intimate to you to me like mornings and evenings are intimate because like that's the time when you would typically you know at the end of the day you would face yourself in the mirror but you're you're with someone else at that time facing yourself still so it's like there's a way that it's it's to me like doubly intimate um but that is just me so taking a time that is is the most intimate for some people it's driving right it, just because you're you're conversing like that's like you have nowhere to really escape to and, and not that you would want to with someone, but it's just like the richness of conversation, right? Like reaching over to hold their hand or to like 
I don't know, like put your hand on their thigh or something like that. Like it's those intimate moments. Like what would that feel like to just do and to let yourself dream that up? Uh, If it's in terms of work, like connecting to your heart could be um, how it would feel to wake up knowing that you had a project that you'd be working on that you really loved. Like, I mean, loved to the depths of your, like in your bones, love. Um, This is also, if it was just a creative project, this could also be, um, you know, you, uh, like it, it, it can be anything, right? If it's, if it's a project, it's, you know, thinking about what a conversation would be like with a client that you really want to land uh, or a client that you really want to work with or a type of client that you really want to work with. Those are all these, these kinds of connecting to your heart um, because you're connecting to how it feels right now. And that is, is uh, huge because that puts you in a position of being able to see that same thing around you in the immediate. So beyond the the magnetism of it, um, it's it's also really important to, um, it's just beyond the magnetism piece and the law of attraction stuff, it's important because it also just feels good. This isn't to say like opt for the stuff that feels good and don't do the difficult things, not at all. This is just to say like there's some, there's value in this in terms of from, from even a balance perspective in 11, 11 on the time. Uh, and even from just like, um, mood management and things like that, like state, that's the one I was looking for managing your state, right? So, um, and then the eight of wands here is showing up as the overcoming, which tells me that there's, it's almost like there's like a catch 22 here. (laughs) There's forward movement. That's really quick, but this, I love the imagery in this deck because it's so evocative. Um, I feel like you might've been feeling a little bit stuck. Like it's kind of like you're throwing snails in the air, but don't because they're precious creatures too. Slimy, but precious. Um, but there's a way that there's like, it's like attachments have held you back. And I think the attachments have possibly come from exploring emotions to the surface level, but the depths of that, like, what do you love? Who do you love? Right? Those types of questions that take you a little bit deeper. That's like the low common denominator of among those types of questions, but like sinking into the questions that would, that would have you, that would pull you deeper, that would pull you into more depths right? So what is it about that energy that, that could draw you deeper into yourself? Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like there's right now the, the, the antagonist position is showing up as this bridging consciousness energy. And I think it might almost be like a hyper awareness of where you are. Um, it could be in a way you are. Um, what I'm picking up from this is that there's, there's energy that you're you're connected to the energy, but it's almost like you could feel small amidst what's happening. And the call isn't to feel minimized or anything because it's almost like there's variations of how you're meeting yourself or need to meet yourself. Right. And this one is like meeting yourself in the expansion of your energy and the way that something is like possibly growing you. Um, And then this is meeting yourself in the energy that might be keeping you smaller or keeping you smaller, that might be more of a, sorry, <laughs> keeping you smaller is in like, you're, you're thinking realistically, as opposed to stretching yourself and allowing your, your, your energy to dream, right? So um, there is that there's also so closing all of this energy out this week, you have the star, which is, to me, this is like hope, like, there's, it's almost like the, the, um, the card equivalent of an act as if, right? Um, And I think this is a deeply healing energy for you. And then I think there's also a component of um, this is like an allowing energy. It's also Aquarian energy. So it could be connected to community and really starting to let people in again, which is, you know, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it given the three of pentacles here. And this is like putting in the work collaborations. This is creative uh, foundations being built. This is putting in uh, putting in a, a measure of work with others to make something bigger than all of you. So it could be that there's ways that you're partnering with folks who are, um, it's not that you're just, it's not that you're just like growing and, and stretching your own capacities, but I feel like this is something that is going to be a shared experience. So it could be that there's like a team that you're joining or something along those lines, or you're teaming up. Like, um, I'm seeing like buddy comedy energy, like Turner and Hooch, um, but like the OG version, <laughs> um, but like that kind of, um, that kind of energy where you're, um, 
you're partnering up with people. And it is, it is something that I think is deeply satisfying. And it's almost like a renewed hope or renewed faith in, um, in the way that you can work. So I feel like there's some healing that's taking place here, uh, or at least an invitation to that, an invitation, like you're inviting the healing in. And I think that this definitely speaks to, um, releasing attachments. I'll read this one line to you here. Empty yourself so you can be filled with something new. Uh, the compulsion will be lifted and peace will come. Trust that something better waits, that something new will open up and you will see new opportunities for fulfillment. So it's almost like being in this loop of attachment, which is what I'm getting from here, right? It's like when you form these attachments, it can become, and, and when you form attachments, it's interesting that this is the role we're clarifying because there's like disappointments from the attachments that you've made, like deep disappointments from attachments that you've made. And, um, I get that it's kind of left you feeling more comfortable hanging out on the surface up here, whereas your emotions want to, you you need to go a little deeper. Um, and that's where these attachments build because they come from things that you push down that you really want, but deny yourself. Or, I mean, that's like the simple, that's one explanation of it. Um, but it's like you're pushing certain things down and you're making it inaccessible to you um, on the surface where you are. You're up on the surface, right? Looking in at all of this as opposed to being in it with yourself uh, and to be in, in, in embodied and in yourself completely. And I think that this is, um, to me, this is an energy of needing to release emotional attachments. Um, yeah, it's a bit of that energy for me. Spirit, what message do you have for my creative collective, please? Clarifying energy for June 28th. Thank you so much. So we have the Page of Cups and the Seven of Wands here. There's something that's being offered here in this work capacity or in this collaborative capacity. It could be somebody approaching with like just a small, just like a little offer, like nothing huge. It's not like a tower, but there's something heartfelt about it that you can pick up on. But then it's like you're, it's like you feel hopeful about it. You see the possibilities with this three of pentacles, but then you're in this place of like, hell no, we won't go. Like, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like there's um, a protest that you're putting up a little bit against, but it's not like, it's not without good reason, but I'm almost getting that you're just really, um, you're pushing up against, um, you're pushing up against, because I think it's the reason for that is like the star card shows up because usually there's needed to be healing. It doesn't show up in a vacuum, right? Like it shows up as to signal as much as the 10 of swords signals an ending, the star card signals something else too. So it's like not an ending, but it shows like this turn, right? This turn of something. Um, so I think that that's a big deal um, because I, I think that this is really, I think this could just be the boundaries that you've had to put up before because of different situations. Um, you might be a little shy to start things with people because, and not just, I'm not just talking about romantically, but just generally speaking, if you've often been, uh, you know, like if, if you feel like you've been in this five of cups energy, that too doesn't show up without good reason in a spread with its uh, companions here. Um, but you could be a little bit shy about working with others, not because you don't want to, uh, but because you're just nervous. And I think it boundaries are okay, but just remember not to keep stuff out. Yeah. The star again, the star again, uh, lovers on the bottom, two of swords, king of cups. Um, I feel definitely now like this is certainly something that this is, I, it's a way of doing things that you, and this could be you, right? You could have offered yourself up, um, you know, and I say offered yourself up because I don't get the impression that it was overly healthy the way that you were operating before. Um, and just overly healthy, meaning it could have been codependent or you were giving with the expectation of getting because the getting was going to validate something for you about yourself that you needed to validate for you, right? So that's where this energy can throw you into this defense mode. The star is showing up here, which tells me that there's like an incredible amount of healing energy right now. Um, so I don't know how you've been using full moon and new moon energy or if you've been in that uh, or doing any releasing. Uh, if you do cord cutting, I would just recommend uh, looking up uh, releasing the cords as opposed to cutting because sometimes what it can do is pull on other people's energies um and it can you know it can definitely it it's like it doesn't it also doesn't really go away for you right if you cut cords it 
keeps the pattern in you, right? It keeps the pattern in you. It just takes away the superficiality of it. Um, so it's like you have to be ready and willing to release the the reason why the cord formed in the first place. So just be mindful of that. If you do any releasing uh, with this much healing energy, I might recommend looking at those patterns and just asking to be shown what cords you're ready to release, what cords and patterns. And because it's a pattern, right? Dr. Shafali Sabri in her book, Radical, A Radical Awakening said, we don't live a life, we live a pattern. And um, aside from being brilliant, that book is phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Um, I feel like it, it illuminates a lot of this healing process here. So it's almost like patterns of relating that left you feeling really defensive. Um, I feel like you're making different choices now, though, uh, more so with your intuition. You're going within a little more, but you're not disconnected from your emotions, right? There's a way that you're deeply connected. And I think that this is making you more emotionally available, not just for a partner or partners, but this is more emotional availability for you regarding um, just the way that you're engaging with projects. Like you're not afraid to be excited about stuff because it's in a way like – in a way, I'm getting this sort of seven of wands here as being like the reason, like the outcome of this this situation here, right? Five of cups, queen of cups, and the eight of wands. Like the way that that was fast moving, yes, but you were, there was a stuckness to it because of the disappointments, right? Um, that tends to be in this, like the way I read this is like you would get excited about something and then something would just happen that would like, it's like somebody would come and pop your, your bubble or your balloon and um, – it wasn't great, but then it's also it, instead of reacting to that situation, it's also important to ask yourself, why do I keep going to the hardware store for milk? Why do I keep going to people who don't get excited? Why do I keep going and expecting that their reactions are going to validate something in me? When you get upset with that, it's like you expected their reaction to um, – it's like you expected their reaction to to it, it would mean more than what it did, right? So it just kind of would get all caught up in your energy. Um, Spirit, can you please clarify this five of cups, the queen of cups and the eight of wands, please? Nine of wands, yeah. Um, again, nine of wands. Six of cups. Eight of swords. What else, Spirit. Ten of swords, whatever it is, you're done. Justice on the bottom. You are like done, done. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna take that too. Um, so, sorry for the little the marshmallow reaction. Oh my god, but I, I'm seeing here that there is like what I like here. So is the the repetition energy here, which informs this sort of stuck feeling and the release. This tells me that the frustration started with this feeling of stuckness. And this tells me that it was definitely something, it was a past pattern for sure that left you feeling stuck. I'm, I mean, it can be past life related, but I feel like this is like, it could have been somebody that you were in some kind of soul contract with or soul bond with. And um, it really, it took your energy for a ride. I think, um, because you were, you didn't necessarily have good boundaries or there were patterns that you really needed to heal, which you do, you are, you have, um, but it informs the frustration, right? Like it's really frustrating when there's like reason you can't see specific aspects. You're like, why am I like this? And you can't see it because you're not looking in the right place. You're looking to other, this could be external, externally facing patterns, right? Like you're defensive and you're looking at other people and circumstances when what you need to do is to go within more and look at those contracts and soul bonds that you've had and how you've uh, signed up for them in some cases, not all, cause I know that not there's nuances here, but, um, I feel like there's there's subtleties that are coming through here um, to do with how you feel. And it's not just about like a wholesale giving up on the past. It's not just about like letting go of the past and having that be that. It's not that tidy in real life, right? I think this is about trusting yourself more because there's a lot of swords that have left you like needing to go within or indicative. These cards are can be indicative of a need to turn within. Um, and again, like a need to turn within right and these are sort of variations on a theme here right one of them is just that you're 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 still the same level of frustrated but this one's more turned inward on yourself right someone said once that um, depression is anger turned inward I, I remembered hearing that when I was in high school um and it's like it, it's when you turn that anger inward on yourself instead of allowing other like allowing yourself to express how you feel. And this could be, you know, and I think about anger just because that's what came up as the example. But it's like the ways that emotions that we need to express. And I'm not talking about like go ham on someone. Don't don't do that. I'm talking about anger in the sense of like 
it means that something to do with your boundaries has been like a line has been crossed. So to turn that inward on yourself, it means that you're in a really codependent pattern because it means you're not taking ownership of, um, you know, saying like this isn't okay. And you don't have to like get rip roaring mad. Like you can say to somebody, I'm, I'm upset. I'm annoyed. I am, you know, this and naming your emotion and saying, I am frustrated. And this is the reason why. And it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me, but I'm frustrated and I'm annoyed at myself. Or you can even say like, I'm frustrated. Like I love you. And I'm just upset that this happened. And I just need time to be upset so that I can then process the emotion and see this with greater clarity, right? Like those types of things you can say, and that's how you can cultivate a safe space to communicate your feelings because we all have them and and you know it, the intensity of emotions is not like it's when you have a way uh, and space to communicate things safely where it's not based on like intensity and it actually is about emotional intimacy right because they can be two sides of the same coin and we can confuse this was much of my 20s like I confused intensity with intimacy because they both had you scrambling to uh, not really scrambling like but they had um I'm seeing scrambling because what I saw was um marbles going in reverse like rolling marbles so it's like it was the marbles to me represented an expression of energy right so your your energy is being expressed in a certain way both of them are expressions of energy, but one of them is really healing and it honors you. And that could also just be you needing to tap into uh, an aspect of this kind of inner child work too, right? And and looking at and healing that and making space for your inner child to have those moments where you say, I am this feeling, I, but you're not the feeling, you are feeling the feeling is what I'm trying to say. Like, I, you know, I feel upset. I feel uh, sad. I feel um, disappointed. That's a big one, right? How many times do we feel disappointed? Five of cups. And we just assume that we just have to, you know, that's just another, you know, it's just another day. Like, no, it's find space to, to cultivate a vocabulary for those emotions and to talk about them. Um, you know, and, and we don't, we, <laughs> I'm depicting an ideal relationship where people can hear, but what if you're both coming to the table activated, right? What if you're both coming to the table potentially dysregulated? How do you navigate that? And I think this is about conversations that draw out this sort of defensiveness because this is like defensiveness turned inward. And then this is defensiveness turned outward. So they're both expressions of the same energy. And I'm getting that it was informed by um, these sort of disappointments that left you feeling really disconnected from your emotions, right? This may be just sort of a need to let yourself cry. And it's okay to do that. There are times where I don't understand why I'm crying. Like I was driving home from seeing family and one of my uncles, um, he's going through some health stuff. And as I was driving back home, I just, I started tearing up and I was just, it felt like there was like, um, almost like those magician strings, like those, like they put them up their sleeve and they pull them. But this felt like a one that was dark. Like it was like a, it was a series of, um, black ties put together. And it was just like, I, I felt this, like I was crying while I was driving home. Um, and just releasing the, the emotion, um, and releasing fears and releasing worry and all of those things. And it felt like that was just being pulled out of me. And that's what happens. That visual is what happens when you just let yourself cry, right? When, when we first found out that he wasn't doing well and we, you know, like diagnoses are interesting because there's so much that you don't know at the time. And I remembered just allowing myself to feel everything. And I think that's what this is really. And the reason why these stories are coming up in mind is because I think this is a call for you to do that is just to feel everything thing right to feel everything and to hold yourself inner child right to hold the baby you the tiny you that like would you how would you treat a daughter or a son or child how you wouldn't tell them you wouldn't expect a kid to be able to regulate their emotions in the face of sadness and I think we forget that we still have those inner children in us and so the call isn't to say do this in this specific way behave in this specific way um, this is really a call, I think, to get in touch with that inner part of you and say it's okay to feel it all because it is a cup's energy too. That's Thanks for coming to my TED Talk about emotions. <laughs> um, but I, what I love here, what I love here is this, again, this matching energy, right? This 10 of swords ending, uh, 10 of pentacles, new beginning, but an invested one because you're very clear on not just what you want, but how you feel and how that's translating into uh, the long term, right? This is Libra and energy and Libra rules the seventh house with Venus and, uh, well, with Venus and that's part of it. And it's like, 
long-term relationships, long-term connections, 10 of pentacles, right? So it's like you're informed all of the, this process, what it really did was opened up. It, it, there were necessary endings, right? There were necessary endings, necessary patterns ending. But what I feel happened here was you got into a position of being able to say what was most important to you and what you really wanted. And that I think was the big purpose of this pattern here. This is a big reading for a Tuesday. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean like any, as opposed to what, <laughs> right? Like, um, so let's uh let's see what we got here spirit can you clarify this six of pentacles in the magician card please we have the five of wands the knight of cups the seven of pentacles i think that showed up yesterday and the queen of cups so i think that this was um i think that you've been putting in some work here and um again it's like i'm seeing several things so <laughs> The six of pentacles is here because more balance is needed, right? We have the six of pentacles and the magician. We're clarifying these energies of needing to come into a balance and really meet yourself because I feel like it's just, it's been messing with your manifesting because you know what you want, but then there's this emotional aspect of it that you just needed to deal with and move through. Um, and I think that was part of, it's almost like emotional training or like leveling up your emotional uh, intelligence. I don't like it that worded that way because intelligence is such a nebulous term. Like what does that even mean? And it also implies that people who are neurodivergent and who experience emotions differently are somehow less than, which is the furthest thing from the case. What I get, what I see here is that this is like um, a way that you've been working with your emotions, not just to be able to name them, but to be able to articulate them to other people. So this could also be the ways that people are engaging with you differently, right? It could be that you're going from this energy of conflict and kind of this passionate disconnect, right? Because this, to me, this strikes me as like, frustrated energy this nine of wands um, energy where you have all of these emotions and there's not really um there's not really a way that you're connecting to the depth of them because you're wrestling with them instead and it's almost like an abstraction whereas this is diving into them so this could be people that you're encountering on the path who are as committed to the emotional journey as you are but this could also just mean that there's parts that you need to deal with this frustration first if that's your first reaction go there don't deny that um don't turn it on other people take responsibility and ownership for what you need to do to manage yourself but then you're there's this way that you're constructively able to say here's my cup and what's in it um and I think this could also just be the way that you're you're manifesting and putting your you know your your um, <laughs> your vibe into the world and the things that are coming from that. Uh, and then so we do have counterpart energy on the board here. So on the board we <laughs> we have the King of Cups and we also have the Queen of Cups here. And I feel like the Seven of Pentacles is um, putting it's a putting in the work, but this is again invested energy. This is emotional investment. And I think that this if if it's not related to a person or relationship or connection or relationship. I feel like this is almost like the story of the connections that you have. And then this lower part is the way that these emotions are connecting to you, the way that these emotions, not just connecting to you, um, the way that you're able to transmute these emotions and turn them into something that is a long-term investment for you, um, so instead of having like, you know, you could have like a bad day or whatever, and then it's it's like, you I don't know, it, I feel like it's an oversimplification to say this, but it's like, you're recognizing that a bad day isn't a bad life on the one hand. Um, that was, I feel like, but you, I, you, I don't know. I feel like there are ways that we can, or I should say, let me put it this way, a bad review isn't a bad, a bad product. Like there's something about balancing energies here where it seems oversimplified, but the way that we experience it based on a series of things like attachment styles, where we are in our healing process, all of this, it can disconnect us, right? It can disconnect us from what we need to see to heal. Um, Spirit, can you please clarify this nine of wands? Ooh, sorry if that was loud in your ears. Uh, the nine of wands and the four of wands in reverse, please. Temperance, more balance, ace of cups, eight of cups, king of pentacles and oh queen of swords on the bottom so i almost feel like there's like a way that your 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 work you were balancing six of six of pentacles um but then it's almost like spirit brings in the, the <laughs> i'm hearing the heavy artillery <laughs> like what but this is sort of like divine balance so there could be you know i think about it in terms of archangel michael and i think that this is the way the uh, certain things are alchemizing and coming into balance but i feel like there's a way that spirit's working with you in the background so you could this could be informed by synchronicities um or different energies that you're coming into contact with emotionally um 
that are helping you to transmute. Like I've experienced it where I was trying to figure out things about past life, soulmates and whatnot. And then I was at a bookstore and books, there were two books that literally fell off the shelf. One of them, I walked past the shelf and it was almost like, I I know I wasn't walking past the bookshelf that quickly, but it fell off the bookshelf and it had to do with past life soulmates. And then um, a couple shelves down, there was another one and it was sitting like, anyways, it, it's stuff like that can happen. Um, That's more like poignant examples where spirit is like, really trying to get your attention um, so that you can either work with that energy or understand it. But then this is also, I I get that this is more, um, this to me comes across as uh, more of a, uh, it's a release energy I'm feeling, but I, I get that there's a way that you're, it's like higher, there's like guidance that's coming in. So it's almost like this FOMO, like you're not going to miss the sign synchronicities, the guidance, the help, uh, because this is very loud, right? It's a major arcana. It's very loud. And the reason why I feel like it's, it's on your path, like you're not going to miss it. Um, and it's very much connected to your heart. And I feel like this ace of cups is opportunity that comes through this. I feel like there's opportunities for new that come through that that meet you on the path number one but that are also meeting you in this beautiful established invested energy right it's allowing you to um I don't know to put down some kind of roots whether that's in your work or in yourself or in relationships I feel like there's maybe an aspect that is like wanting this um this like emotional established energy based on something that you value that's important to you right it could be a blend of those energies that could definitely be the case. Um, whoops, it's sticking there. I'm just thinking about long term because of the Justice card, the Ten of Pentacles. There's a lot of like invested energy, um, invested energy for sure. Uh, this could be people. This could be an opportunity that invests in you. This that's what this could be. This could be uh you know like a, a new offer. Uh, this could be someone offering you their cup. This could also be um, emotions that you're able to respond to on the path in ways that that bring about situations that that really do have this um, maturity to them. If this is a person, this could be someone with earth, uh, earth and water in their chart who could be slightly older than you. But if we're looking at less specifics and more general related to you. Um, I feel like this is a bit of energy where you're, you're able to see, um, I feel like you're able to see the path more clearly because it's informed by not just desire, not just desire, but like what's actually important to you. And I feel like these, these are meeting, these energies are meeting on the path. Um, so I think that the story here that's evolving that I really like to see is that there's a lot of healing of disappointments and the ways that you interpreted those disappointments relative to your sense of worth. But more than that to, um, I think it's almost like letting go of ways of seeing interactions with others. Uh, like, cause I'm getting this 10 of swords, nine of wands twice. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of energies of, uh, needing to protect yourself for, for whatever reason that is. But I, you know, the queen of swords can come across as that sort of protective energy. I think of this in terms of my aunts, right? Like my aunts are fierce, badass human beings (laughs) and they like, they, they're very protective of their loved ones. Right. So I think of that. I laugh just because they're so, they're so different. (laughs) They're so different, but they, like they, they all have this, this aspect to them. That's like deeply intentional and, um, caring and just open hearted. Um, but it's like in a queen of wants or queen of swords capacity so it's like you're finding this part of yourself you're finding this part of yourself uh spirit can you please clarify this muse of pentacles this bridging consciousness energy for me please (laughs) ace of swords there's truth that you're going to find within yourself there's truth that you're going to find on the path um yeah but it's, I think it's like a within energy. I think this is also like a bit of analyzing. Don't overanalyze though. Cause then that can throw you into a five of cups too. Yeah. Overanalyzing. I feel like it's, it's tricky because sometimes that we can feel like we're exerting energy and effort. And so the energy of effort is like when we exert that energy, what we're doing is we think we're making progress and it's not about progress in a linear trajectory, but this is about progress, nor is it progress for the sake of itself. Um, but I feel like this is potentially, there's a way that you're getting caught in, um, it's almost like you're getting caught in seeing options that, um, 
distract you from your truth. So it's definitely about going within because this is like external stimulation. External, well, it sounds funny. Anyways, um, like external information coming in. So it could be an overload of that. So you need to go within. And there's a lot of cards that support this sort of inward reflection. Two of Swords, the Eight of Swords, um, you know, the Queen of Cups, the King of Cups. These are more inward facing energies. Um, Ten of Cups, of course. That's, yeah. Ten of Cups, and then we have the Ace of Pentacles and the Wheel. Holy crap. Um, okay, so <laughs> it's almost like we go from, well, there's three Aces here, so there's a lot of new. There's a lot of opportunity here. A lot of opportunity to express not just what you value, but for what you value to find you and to land in the heart space in a way that feels either lucky or like it's an expansion. And it, like it's an expansion of, of your world, like the, the tangible realm right? It's, it's like an expansion of that energy for you. And I'm really, honestly, like I'm getting that there's a lot that is, there's a lot of good here. <laughs> there's a lot of good here for you. If you're looking for a relationship, I do feel like there's some kind of um, romantic relationship that's either improving this to me. If you're in a relationship, this looks to me like improved communication, um, moving, moving or removing patterns that sort of blocked communication and the flow of love. Uh, I'm also getting that this was, it's like a healing of patterns that were really, um, that took away a lot. Like they took away a lot of your energy. Number one, number two, it's, it feels like it also took away a lot of stability. And I feel like you're understanding and, and balancing what stability means. Cause I feel like it may have been weighted towards seeing stability through the interactions that you had with others, but you're seeing stability in a whole new light. And it's, it's really, there's a lot of new, there's like new perspectives, new opportunities, new, um, there's just new here. It's almost like seeing, yeah. And then like the card on top here, create space for new love. Like, are you kidding me? Uh, I'm going to put that to the side because that just jumped out at me. But like, there's like new here. Um, and I think you're, it's, it's, you're able to see it because you've changed your perspective fundamentally. Um, I'm going to pull more from the, uh, notes from the universe deck here by Mike Dooley spirit. What messages do you have? Oh, do you want this one? There we go. Okay tried to be all fancy but it was stuck to my hand <laughs> okay so it's not only about being right it's not only about being right and what would love do um so it, to me it's a, maybe a little bit of releasing control uh and asking you know if i if i if i want love what would love do if i want connection what would connection do here maybe just as a way of thinking outside of the box of what you're used to if if you're you know there's i think it's einstein that said something along the lines of like the energy that went into create like the the energy of the problem in the energy of the solution they they're kind of like at odds with each other so they don't like they don't talk to each other so well right um so it's like being in the energy of the solution. Sometimes it's just a perspective shift. Other times there's more work involved, which is okay. But it's about understanding how to balance your energy through each process and through each level of healing. Um, so create space for new love. I'm going to put that up here too because it's beautiful. Oh, I just squeaked. You are very welcome. You get the, the premium only at the end of the reading squeak. <laughs> um so yeah, I just, I feel like there's a lot of new here and if it's not new love, so if this isn't new love, then what I get, like if you're in a relationship and you're like, mm, not really what I'm looking for, I feel like this is a renewed sense of love and appreciation for what you do, for what you're involved in, all of it. Um, I measure my success by how much fun I'm having. Yeah. And it's like, maybe things have been kind of like, bleh, like you're just, you know, you get into a routine and you're kind of stuck. Like, and it's not the, like the situation is feeling stuck because all you do is like, you wake up and you do your thing and it's, it's just like this routine, right? And it can get really dry. Even if you shake it up, there's a need for the fundamental energy to change. And if you're not changing the fundamental energy, it's still, it's just going to like that stuckness is just going to go from place to place in your life, right? So it's like something big may have to change. It could just be changing up something simple in your routine, right? And, and adding more fun or more time for fun. Um, okay, so I need, I release my need to be perfect and I center into my commitment to serve the world more love. Love. So this strikes me as, as this energy here, right? I release my need to be perfect, right? It's not only about being right. And that can be perfectionism. So there could be a degree of perfectionism that's showing up here where it kind of left you feeling stuck. Uh, it kind of maybe left you, um, 
feeling um, depleted is the word that I'm hearing. Um, yeah, so my darlings, that is your reading for today. This was deep, but I feel like there's a lot of good stuff coming. Are you excited? I'm excited for you. I am very excited for you. Um, so if this resonated, please like, and subscribe. I'd love to have you on the channel and I'm excited to see where we go tomorrow. So do come back. Uh, and there are other ways you can connect with me on the channel. So check that out if you so desire. But if this is where we part, my darling daily creatives, I hope that wherever this finds you on the time space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, it finds you very, very well. Take care.